So long. It's really good. He's from the East region of Ghana. He's one of the songs for his sweet string instruments. And after that, we'll talk more. We'll mingle. For the night, we'll come back and just some more songs to tell as well. Welcome! Thank you! Thank you! Thank you! Once again, welcome to the kitchen. The kitchen is Ghana Food Movement's food education hub that is Ghana Bull Fan Dating this year. So you're very, very welcome. Mm -hmm. And we have a group of very special people here with us today. They are part of the Castanea Fellowship. They are all change makers in the food system in America. They're working, they are farmers, they are project managers, they are educators. They are driving similar type of change that we want to see in Ghana, which is just resilient, independent food systems that caters to people and not profits. So they are here for uh, one week's experiences in Ghana. We're going to go on a field trip tomorrow to visit uh, some farms. They are here in the building. We're going to visit Solomon from Call to Nature. Solomon is there. And visit Corina from So Green Farms. They're also here. And Ghana Food Movement is a network of food change makers here in Ghana. So we've invited some of our community to network and mingle with you today. Uh, so I really want to encourage you to talk to as many people as you can. We're really here to just have a good time, to meet and to connect and see how we can support each other because we have very similar agendas. So I will give over to Abdallah, my co-director, who's going to talk a little bit more about Ghana Food Movement. We are talking now, <laughs> and then uh, there will be some bites, some things, some sport nights, and some kitchen triggers. Uh, yeah, that's kind of much it. Thank you very much. Again, I think we've been all of ourselves around the course of being in the I mean, we were just mentioning how two years ago we got the email, and you know, I spoke to him after the, the conversation with you, and I was like, What is this happening? And he was like, Oh, it's only a sign. I was like, Oh, okay. <laughs> Right. Yeah, don't, don't worry, don't worry. So please, an applause for Hani as well. And welcome to what we call the GFW Kitchen. It is a food education hub, as we said, but those are just words. I think the feeling of the place, you can feel it already. If you look around you, the colors, faces, the people, and their stories that brought them here. This is very much what the kitchen is about. It's a space for change makers, innovators, for food, future, for food that is famous and just resilient, independent, but also connected. That's right. Also connected. Because we're in this world together, it's important to always make these connections across the seas, across the oceans. So that also is very much what this space is about. We have one of our partners there, Daniel, from the Neglected and Other Sex Program. Daniel, we can, and yes, 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 yes. Sorry. And I mention him because one of the key things I've been trying to do in this kitchen is to show kids in Ghana and what's happening down here. That produce your ingredients, your local indigenous ingredients, to cook the best, most nutritious meals that can be served on the continent and also from this other place in the world. And you can use that with our local ingredients. So there's no more excuses. There's no more 
oh, there's not enough this, there's not enough that. The chicken has to be imported. We have somebody who brings chicken from here, or raises right. here. We have the, all the rituals, right? The legal options. And this place is going to the things that we show us and showcases and girl passes in the world. So once again, thank you very much for coming. This is the very nice to anybody here, so... We just got the rail off the red rail uh, by the stairs yesterday. <laughs> 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 So I want to introduce uh, Violet from Skill Gourmet to the stage. But Violet is one of these actors that we need to support, that we need yeah. to connect with, yeah. because he's doing something, he's doing something amazing. So, Violet, welcome. Thank you. We would love to hear a little bit about what you do okay. and what drives you to do it. Okay. Um, hi, everyone. Yeah. So, my name is Violet Awamabe, and I'm the founder and CEO of Skin Gourmet. Yeah. all high-grade skincare. It's sourced from the wilds of Ghana, and it's so pure that you can literally eat it. And the reason why I started Skin Gourmet was literally because I had traveled abroad. And I came back to Ghana, I had a lip irritation. And I really didn't know much about what was here, which is kind of surprising for someone who's Guinean. Anyway, I can was like, buy the price share butter. And I'm like, share yeah, butter, like, no, no, And all the traveling I've done, really. And I tried it. And like, within three days, it was gone. No story, nothing. And I'm like, wait, something like this exists in Ghana. So then I started doing my research. I wanted to find out. And when I went to the village, and I'm like, okay, so tell me all the share butter, you know, this, this year I want to do business. And we're eating it. I'm like, wait, you eat your skincare? And I'm like, yeah. well, yeah, I think whatever you put on your skin is going to have in your body. It's fine glow. And I was like, I'm going to start a business. And that's how it started. But, you know, coming to Ghana and living here, one thing I've really noticed is disparity, right? Between those of higher income and those of lower income. And I can say that I'm a pretty privileged family. So that bugs me because I feel that everybody should be entitled to have, if not, at least what I've had, more than that. And so I wanted to help, but how do you do that on the salary that I have? So anyway, fast forward, I had my first employee. And I'm like, wait, this is how I can actually create sustainable income for Ghana. If I take the local resources we have, I make it a high and high quality product for export. Yes. And at the same time, create local jobs. Yes. And in doing this, this job, I found so much innovation and so much beauty in Ghana, which is like, I just love the fact that our culture it's deep in the sense that something as simple as skincare, mm -hmm. it's also good. And then I learned from other great brands like Muduno about how our food is intricate to our soil and health climate. And everything just kind of just blew my mind. And so at the end of the day, Skin Gourmet keeps me going because this is how I can contribute back to my country, mm -hmm. how we can preserve our traditional skills, how we can also tap to those at the grassroots level and create like decent income, decent jobs and create dignity for people. Mm -hmm. And it's just been amazing because it's, it's deeper and deeper and deeper and I appreciate my culture so much oh. I went from thinking mm, share my thoughts to like oh my god share my race so that's essentially um, the story of Skin Gourmet thank you guys so much for coming oh, wow. <laughs> Thank you, Violet. You're welcome. This is so inspiring. And entrepreneurs just like Violet are incredible role models for the youth. And this is where all these people will meet in the kitchen. The next person I would like to introduce to the stage is Elijah from Food for All. He was one of the founders of Ghana Food Movement back in 2018 and 2019. And he's doing also something really amazing that I want him to tell you as about. What do you do and what drives you? Thank you very much. I'm so sorry. Apart from all of you, as for the brand name, you're already at home. <laughs> so, my name is Chef Jaya Amuado. Uh, as Amy in introduced me, I'm the founder and executive director of Food for Africa. 
So my journey in food actually started at the age of 11. As the only boy from a family of four, I lost my mom all of a sudden and was left in the care of my parents. And the moment that I really enjoyed with my mom was mostly in the kitchen. Because and it's from a community known as Buko, some few minutes away from Usu. And the moment that I really enjoyed was that anytime she cooks in the house, being the only boy, I'm the first to get this the food uh, before any other. So when I say the salt is too much, then it means the salt is too much. So after I lost my mom, left in the care of my grandma, I had to go and stay with my auntie in Nigeria. And that was where I actually fell in love with food. I realized that any time I find myself closer to the closer to the kitchen, that connection was there. So even though I promised my mom I wanted to be a medical doctor, <laughs> I ended up as a doctor in the kitchen. <laughs> so most of my colleagues actually call me a doctor in the kitchen. I used to work in a hotel not far away from here, Alisa Hotel, and every morning when I am going to work, I will come into contact with this mentally ill man who will come to the hotel, the, the trash bin, where we keep our trash bin, pick leftover foods from the trash bin, and then go to other hotels, other street food vendors. Then at the end of the day, we'll put this food into small bags, go on to the street, Keep his colleagues on the streets of Accra. Mm -hmm. And there was an everyday job for him. Mm -hmm. So one day I mustered the courage to ask him why he does that. Mm -hmm. And his response to me in our local language was, if I don't do it, who will? Mm -hmm. Immediately that didn't mean anything to me. But reflecting on the connections I've had with my mom in the kitchen and being an open at that stage, I realized that it wouldn't be enough for me to be the best chef in Ghana or the best chef in the world, but rather it will make more meaning and my mom will be more proud of me if I can use my skill to make sure that people don't have access to food. Maybe that because of their economic challenge whatsoever, at least for them to have access and that was how my journey as a social entrepreneur started and became the founder of Food for All Africa. So Food for All Africa operates West Africa's first and largest community food support center. All that we do is that we work with businesses and stakeholders within the food supply chain to ensure that those who don't have purchasing power can at least have access to food. And so we work with them to recover food, to feed school children. We have a school feeding program called the Landbox School Feeding Program, where schools that are not under government school feeding at least get access to school food. And currently, we have over 5,000 school children in 25 schools across five regions of Ghana. We also have mobile teaching funds that goes across communities where we know a lot of homeless people are to make sure that at least in the wind they can get access to food. And we do all this because if you look across the food supply chain in Ghana, you realize that a lot of food is going to waste. So about 45% of food produced wow. in our supply chain goes to waste. Mm -hmm. And for us, the little we can do is to make sure that we connect to those without the purchasing power. So that's what we do at Food for All Africa. And in 2018, I came into contact with Lotte, and she said, look, we have to bring all this network together mm -hmm. for Ghana Food Movement. The year yeah, we are, I keep telling Amy, I'm so proud of what Ghana Food Movement has achieved so far in this short possible time. And it makes me proud, and I know we will get it.
So this was just two of many, many change makers in this room. If you see, we have some posters. Almost all the posters uh, are represented in the room, okay? So if you read a poster and you're like, I need to talk to the person behind this, grab me and I'll show you. Hopefully I know. <laughs> but it wouldn't be a Ghana food movement event if we aren't also having some food, right? So I want to present to you our kitchen manager, Maoli Tanzi, who is going to be famous for I'm sure you have a better look at you than that before we're all right. I'm sorry, boy. I'll come back to you now. Uh, yeah, I'm Chef Jansi, kitchen manager for the Ghana Food Movement, and I'm here to present to you a four-item character. I guess. Take some dessert and put a twist. Um, as Ghana Food Movement, we pride ourselves in local ingredients and also sourcing local. But in this sauce, we like to play and be a way to our own food. So when I'm making today, the kitchen food is fine. We should play around five balanced ingredients. That is our planted at all. Our uh, agouji, uh -huh. our fricassee, uh -huh. and our gobe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Interestingly, we made a gobe hummus, which is going to be served with cocoa chips and brown onions with a pack of strong oil. Oh, um, we're also going to be serving some plantain dish with agouji resto and um, uh, highly special pickled onions. Okay. We are also going to be serving um, one dish skewers with some kachumbari and sura powder. If you are allergic to peanuts, you have a hot for salt and pepper for you. Um, then we also introduce our fracassa barley, which is yeah. a good by our second day, pastry chef, um, delicious, um, with appetite flambe, uh, pineapples with breakfast. Yeah. Yeah. Enjoy. Yeah. 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 Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And I'm sure you've also seen our bar. We have friends here. Hi. Our, our bartender for the, for the night who has innovated some really cool cocktails for this event, which you see local ingredients, of course. If if you have more questions about allergies and diets, also come to me because we have like other options for all of your different allergies. We are very good. Okay, what I said, let's you go, let's network, let's have fun. Okay, I don't want to invite him for to come and please tell us what do you do and what do I do? Hello. 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 And it is as a result of the NGOs and the civil society organizations that have been going to the local communities to be giving us all the feedback you are giving us here. That has made me who I am here. And I What's that? What's the thing? Let's contain it to Made with contain and then ambushy on top. No, but I'll get you one more from the round. I'll be back. I'll be back. I'll be back. This is why. So, um, black bean humus okay. with cocoa yam chips and a little bit of pakushito on the side. Oh, okay. I want to present I would like to present a from Ghana. We are doing amazing, amazing work. Take
taking uh, the government towards a new standing up for farmers, which is much more needed than ever right now. So, Edwin, welcome. What do you do and what drives you to do what you do? Greetings. Um, I uh, my name is uh, Edwin Wanda Bafana, Communications Director of Food Support Ghana. We are a civil society organization that uh, advocates for, you know, healthy food systems and food security. Uh, food sovereignty is beyond the having and containing of important food. It's about where your food comes from. Uh, if the food that you're growing damages the streams on the land, if it, if it kills the bees, if it, if it destroys local culture, if it erodes um, indigenous knowledge, all these things contribute to food sovereignty. So Ghana is at the crossroads right now. So not to talk too much, thank you very much for this platform. And, uh, Thank you so much for all the work for doing. Full Serenity Ghana. I want to invite a very special Rafia of Lisan Fati Foods, a member of the Nile Food Movement, and a lot of house long in Diane. What do you do and why do you do what you do? Hello, my name is Rafia Sonoma. I work with a marketing company for 18 years. And then when I went to have my last child, the doctor diagnosed that I have high blood pressure because my boss used to stress me a lot. So I said, okay, so after delivery and... They gave me some drugs. Surprisingly, when I take those orthodox medicine, my heart burns. I feel uncomfortable. And when I get to the hospital, as the doctor is telling me, you need to drink this, you take this, then the veins around my head is shaking. They're like, let's check your cholesterol. They check me up like, why are you so sick? I'm like, you are making me sick. I wasn't <laughs> sick when I came here. Mm -hmm. But they're telling me I'm, I'm, I'm not well. So, um, the orthodox medicine well was actually no okay. yeah, So, the doctor said, okay, I have this friend in South Africa. She tried avocado seed. Why don't you try it? Let's see. It might save you. So, I thought I was dying. So, I would try anything. Mm -hmm. So, I looked from everywhere. I couldn't find the product. So, the doctor offered to import it. And then, he got it from Amazon. I took the first pouch, the second pouch, the third pouch. And then, when I came back to the hospital, he was like, Rafia, if I had not diagnosed you, I would have said the doctor didn't know what he was saying. Because you're just perfect. Your BP has normalized and I mean, this is wonderful. So I sat down and I asked myself, these are things we are trashing in the market. When avocado is in season and go, you see the seeds on the floor. You step on them and then this is saving lives. But yes, we don't know. Yes. So what do I do? I want to stop my job and then take this one. So this is how come I started um, the sun fatty. So, yeah. so actually my dad name and my mom's name combined. The reason why I chose that name, um, I think on earth I've never met a man like my father because he's so patient, he's so bad. In everything he does, he's like, are you sure you're doing the right thing? But you know, if one ingredient is missing in your living, you're actually cheating the customer and God would not like that. So like, he injects me so much and He's patient with everything. My mom will be like, this person is insulting you. This person is gossip about you. He said, let them say. So I'm like, no, I could use this man's name as a guy that's even though he's dead now. But when, when you mention me son, because that's his name, or you mention me son Fatty, I'm like, he's watching and I need to do the right thing. So, um, we, um, I started with avocado seeds. So when I produce the avocado seed powder, then we have a lot of waste from the fruits and then the peel. 
And I it was going with for a long time. And I went to a training and they trained us on um, circular economy. It means you do not allow anything to go with. So I'm like, okay, so what do I do with the fruits? I started researching and I realized that we could extract oil from the fruits. And then the pills, we could um, come up with um, a herbal tea with it. So I started it and surprisingly, the whole of Ghana, I'm the only person officially doing this. And everywhere I go, people are like, okay, this is new, this is unique. Wow, Rafia, please do what you're doing because you're saving lives. Do not take too much of this orthodox medicine because definitely they are going to leave marks on your body. My mom will say, you go looking for like two twins. It's just like you're going looking for the elder one and the younger one is missing. So you take this medicine thinking you're healing yourself, but you will leave something behind that would worry you when you're aging. So I ensure that let your food be your medicine before your medicine becomes something else. <laughs> So now we will continue the Vingani because I know you have so much to talk about with each other. But one thing I wanted to say is that we have some really cool t shirts. Ghana Food Woman t shirts are designer Lydia. She's not here today, but she has printed them specially for you with different prints Fufu and Friends, chocolate, which means like eat, um, food identity, food politics, and those type of messages. So if you want to support us, you can buy a t shirt. Um, for yourself, for a friend. Yeah. And other than that, let's continue the meeting. Oh.